What is Access? Access is a database. What is a database? A database is a software program where you can store and organize all of your data in two. For example, let's say I want to keep track of all the employees in my company. I want to be able to store their information, their first name, last name, date of birth, so I can send them a birthday card on their birthday, also their phone number, maybe their hourly rate or salary. All of that information I can create and store. And for each employee that I have, there's going to be a record. So for example, me, Kirk Kershaw, I have my first name, my last name in this database. Also, I'm going to have my home address, the hourly rate that I make. All of that creates one record, one record for each employee. Other things I can keep track of are like products. My company sells products, but I want to keep track of it separate from my employees. Now in Microsoft Access, to keep track of them separately, they have what are called tables. So this would be a table of information all about the employees who work for my company. And this would be a separate table of information all about products. And here, I would have things like the product ID, the product name, how much I have in inventory or on stock. Again, all about products. I also have orders. So every time a client makes an order, I want to keep track of the order. Maybe I have an order ID, also the date that the order was made. And then finally, we have the clients themselves. We have the company's name or the first name, last name of the client, their address, shipping address, their credit card information on file. Now Microsoft Access is what is called a relational database. A relational database means that these tables can relate to each other. Let me put it to you this way. When you have a filing cabinet and you have information on your employees, your products, maybe the orders they made and when they made it, do you dump them all into one filing cabinet or all into one folder? And let's say you just want to pull up an employee. That's really inefficient because first of all, you have to lift this 20 pound folder out. And then secondly, you have to sort through the products, your orders, just to get and find your employees. I mean, what a waste of time. So in a relational database, for example, you create again what are called separate tables or separate folders. And I've got four of them here. And what that means is, for example, if I want to pull up the clients, that's easy to pull up. But what if I want to pull up the clients and I want to keep track of all the products one client has purchased, like let's say client XYZ, then what I want to do is I want to create, again, Microsoft being a relational database, a relationship between the products and the clients. So I can come over here to the products and say, look, I want to extract some of this data. I want to find out for the products, let's say we sell essential oils. For all the essential oils we sell, I want to find out all the clients who purchased that. Maybe I want to do some target marketing to those clients. Not only that, but for every product that's purchased, it's through an order. So we're going to create a relationship from the uh, products to the orders. And of course, relate all the tables so we can actually pull information from one table and have it relate to the next. So if we have the clients related to the orders, if I just want to keep track of how many orders they made, I just, again, need these two tables. I don't have to pull up the employees. I mean, that makes no sense. So it really becomes more efficient when you break it down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, or in this case, tables here. All my orders are in one, all my products are in one table, all the clients are in one, and so on. Now, Access is more than just tables of information. In fact, what makes Access so powerful, once you create your tables or your data in these tables, is the ability to manipulate that data and pull in what you want, when you want. So for example, let's say I've got 200 employees. I don't want to go through each employee's records and find out if the employee has benefits or doesn't have benefits. I want to be able to instantly create a query and pull up all the employees who do not have benefits. Just filter out those who have benefits and filter in those who don't. Let's say out of the 200, it automatically pulls up 25 employees. I mean, that's fast, that's efficient, and that's what they call a query in Access. And then based upon that query, I could create a report, print that off and hand it over to HR and have them go ahead and contact these employees to be able to offer them benefits. Also, you can control how the information is being entered into your database, and in this case, into your tables. So for example, if I hired on a new employee and I want to be able to have the first thing they enter in is the employee ID, and then go ahead and enter in the employee's first name, last name. Just think of it this way. Have you ever done shopping over the web and you've gone to a web page and you put in your first name, last name, and they had those fields up at the top here? Well, in Access, you can control where you place those fields and what fields come first. You can have the fields up at the top of your form in the middle over to the right-hand side. In fact, let me go to the next slide in my PowerPoint presentation and break this down. Now, Access has what are called objects, and as we just learned in the previous slide, the foundation of all the objects are tables. Because let's face it, without a table of data, you don't have a database. So we got to have some data, and to store the data, we create a table. And we break the data down into its smallest, most meaningful parts, in this case, tables. For example, 
We had a table all based upon employees. We want to keep track of all of our employees and keep that in a separate table and keep track of all the clients in another table, like their first name, last name, shipping address, and so forth. Now, before we go any further, I strongly recommend you actually watch our Microsoft Excel 2010 training videos if you're not familiar with Excel because Access has a lot of similarities to Excel, except that Excel is a little more simplistic and is a great introduction to Access's tables. For example, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link here to open up my Excel 2010 workbook and give you an introduction into tables because Access table and this Excel, well, what they call spreadsheet here, are the same in that they have cells. I can click in a cell there. And these cells make up a spreadsheet in Excel or in Access, they would make up a table. And you can see over on the left hand side here, I have a database on my Dreamforce's payroll, and I'm keeping track of all my employees their first name, last name, social security number. You see, I've got all this information here, and that makes up a database. And you can say, look, if I can create a database in Excel, why don't I use Excel? Well, you may want to use Excel to store your information to keep track of it, because in Excel, you can actually do some sorting, like you can sort by last name. You can also filter out those who don't have benefits, but on a very simplistic level, because Excel really wasn't meant to be the end-all of end-all databases. It's something to get started on. Also, Excel will perform functions and calculations, like for example, I have the hours for Max here, 40 hours, and how much he gets paid per hour. And what I did is I multiplied those cells to get the gross for that week. In fact, think of the Access database built for small to mid-sized businesses. When it comes to the hierarchical structure within Microsoft, Excel is a way to start learning about databases and how to perform calculations, and then Access is the next step up. For example, in Excel here, you cannot print reports or design a report. What you see here is what you get. It's face value. So let me go ahead and close out of Excel here and come back to my PowerPoint presentation and finish off our objects. So once we have our data, our raw organized data, the tables, then we can go ahead and query out the information from those tables. We can say, look, we want to see all the employees who do not have any benefits. That's what's called a query. It instantly filters out those employees who do have benefits and only pulls in those who don't. That way you don't have to scroll through hundreds or thousands of records to find those who don't. On top of a query, Access has what are called forms and reports. Again, a form is something you can create as a place where you can organize the fields and control how the user inputs the data into the table because again a table is where you store all the data so this is just basically a place where you can actually type in information once you type it in it dumps it right into the table and forms you can make look really nice think of it like this way like a report a report is information you're taking from the table but in an organized way just as a form is a way of entering in information a report is a way of pulling out information in a nice organized manner and then finally, I want to be able to define those objects a little bit more in detail. So a form by definition will display the information from the table or query, because again, a query is based upon a table, or you can enter in new information, new data, new records. So that's a form. It's a way of being able to control what the user inputs that's going to store in the table, and the table again is raw organized data. Report is the printable results of forms or queries. You can actually turn a form into a report and print that off. And again, forms are based upon either queries or tables, and queries are always based upon tables. And what are queries? It's just another way to retrieve data from a table to be able to filter in and filter out specific information you want to see or don't want to see. And finally, again, emphasizing the table. Without data, without information, without records, without names, addresses stored, you don't have a database. I'm going to go ahead and end my PowerPoint presentation here and take you right to my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and put the access icon on my desktop so anytime I need to open up or close access instead of doing it from the start menu, which I'm going to have to do it, well, the first time, let me go ahead and click down in the search field. I'm using Windows 7. Let me go ahead and type in access 2010. And there it is. I can go ahead and right click on it and say I want to send it to the desktop to create my shortcut. Click off in a blank area. There's my shortcut. Then anytime I want to open up Access, I can just go ahead and double click on that uh, shortcut, that icon. Or if you have Windows 7, you can also actually click and drag it and pin it to the taskbar.